Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. First time in Buffalo ever. Uh, my name is David Padilla. Uh, you can find me on the internet as David on Twitter, GitHub, etc. And um, I work for a company called Crowd Interactive, which is a web development consultancy based in Mexico, more specifically a small town by the Pacific uh, called Colima. And I'm here to talk a little bit about how to make music with Ruby, as you saw. So uh, what I was using there is a little gem that I created called Banjo. Um, but before, before I go down into details, I'm gonna, I, I wanna talk a little bit about what inspired me to write Banjo, right? So I've always been interested in sort of mixing music and code, my two passions. So this is me, a lot of pounds earlier. Um, and I used to play at a band and I, I used to play the bass and also I played a sort of innovative instrument. This is back in around 2011, uh, sorry, 2009. And it's barely noticeable, but I have a pedal down here. And this pedal, uh, if you're a musician, you'll probably recognize it as one of the basic uh, distortions uh, that you can use on a guitar, except that mine, I removed the guts of it and I just uh, kept the switch and then, um, I plugged in uh, a cable that connected to the parallel port of my laptop, which I had, you know, right by my side. And then I wrote this little program so that every time I press that pedal, a sound file will sound on the speakers. So as I was playing, I hit the pedal and the sampling will begin, you know? Um, and so that complemented the music of my band, sort of like uh, a DJ, but I, I, I was just using my feet to actually trigger the sounds, right? So this is, uh, I rescued some of that code. That program was written in Visual Basic. That's how old I am. Um, and I rescued some, some of the code. And, and I don't know, to be honest, I don't know what's going on, except that there's a bunch of fifths and elves. I guess the important part is that IMP call that actually read uh, the parallel port. And if it was 254, what you read, then do stuff, right? And I'm trying to remember why 254. It's probably because the parallel uh, protocol, it's backwards. And um, when you actually put a current on one of the, one of the data pins, it, it probably goes into uh, a zero so that the easier number to get is 254 uh, as I press the pedal, right? So um, later on, Last year, I was, I was invited to speak at a conference call uh, in Israel, Rails Israel, last, uh, last year. And while I was speaking there, there was this uh, guy called Jan Krutisch. And um, at one of the parties at Rails Israel, this guy did almost the same thing that I just did. He plugged on his computer, um, and he uh, displayed code on a, on a projector, and, and he started sort of coding music. So that was the performance. You can see PJ on the drums right there. That's PJ. And there was, uh, I don't remember his name, uh, this guy with the accordion. So they were all playing, and John will be sort of live coding music. And, and this, is, this was his code. And so when I saw it, I was like, whoa, I want to do that because that's awesome. And I love music, and I love coding, and I want to do something like that. So I went on and, and figured out like what, what was he using, and, and he has his own library, which is called Live Coder, and that's what he was using. And I tried to set it up, except that there was a little bit, pro uh, a little problem, which was that it's written in JavaScript, and I suck at JavaScript, like real bad. Uh, I'm a Ruby developer. Um, I still tried, you know, to, to figure it out, um, but I, just couldn't, uh, so I just said, screw it, let's just write something in Ruby and, and make it happen. So I did, uh, and that's how Banjo, uh, Banjo came, came to be. So um, I analyzed what he was doing, first of all, like I, I, I was fortunate enough to take this video, so I was looking at, yeah, I know what you're doing, John, um, and, and by looking at it, I tried to analyze this code and figure out what he was doing, and uh, like all this modulus happening, and then um, it hit me, like, oh, I know, I, I know what he's doing. He's sort of um, doing maybe uh, 
some sort of uh, scanning to, to, to a lot of integers, and if uh, that integer seems to be, uh, uh, like the result is, is one of these modulus, then he will play like the, the, the ba bass drum or, or the snare or some sample or something like that. So um, it looks something like this. So let's say, uh, at least this is the way Banjo works. So you have like a sweeping to, uh, that goes from zero to 15 like all the time. And then if you want to play a um, note or something that, uh, that only you only want it on, on, certain, um, on a certain pattern, then you do something like this, right? Like if, if i modulus 4 equals 0, then play the note. And so in this case, only the, only the green ones will play, and the other ones will be totally silent. Um, same if you, if you change it to 7 and so on. So let me talk a little bit about music theory. Just a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with um, music sheet, um, uh, sorry, with sheet music. Um, and you usually have something like this, like you have the, the staff, and then you see like a number, a couple of numbers here. So this is basically just telling you how 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 music is measured, like on, on this particular uh, sheet. So uh, this basically means that every period will be uh, composed of uh, four quarter notes, which are this ones, right? So this is the measure of, of every period, and it's sort of the principle behind of um, behind of banjo. Um, so if we wanted to do, uh, except that I, I added a little bit more, more more control, if you wanted to do something like this, like that plays a quarter note, you will use the uh, the actual uh, modulus four, and then it will be like boom, 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 boom. I'd like it will be like um, every every quarter note. Um, so let me. Do a little demo of that. So what I what meant is, let's say, for example, here, I'm playing the um, C3 note, sorry, and then I will say every four, right? So. So uh, what I was, you know, what I was thinking of it. So I had the, the the basic idea, and I was thinking like, how how can I do it with Ruby and 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 to do something like uh, what was described there, where you will have like some sort of timer and then call it every time, and then maybe play the note, maybe don't, uh, maybe don't. And the first thing I thought was maybe an infinite loop and use a thread and then a counter, but yeah, that 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 didn't work out very well. Uh, so I stumbled upon Event Machine. And it, I, I've used it before, Event Machine, uh, to to sort of um, do basic web servers, but I've never thought of it that that it ha actually had a, a timer sort of functionality. So that's what I used uh, for Banjo. So you, inside the code, you basically just uh, declare an Event Machine um, uh, to to run, and then you add a periodic timer. So if you if you had this code on a console. Uh, this will just happen every second, right? Because I'm telling you, I'm telling here about machine at a periodic timer that every second just uh, do this. Um, let me show you, just in case you don't believe me. So that's all it does, basically. It's just, it's just um, the the basics are that it's just telling us every time a second has passed. And that's the basic. So when I found that, uh, found that out, then I, hmm, that's, that's interesting. That might work for me. So the next thing to do was to actually do stuff with that periodic timer, right? So what I, what I sort of uh, did with Banjo is that what happens on that uh, specific time, that poll rate, is that it loads all the classes that are in the folder called channel. And those classes uh, are basically uh, your instruments, your different instruments, like drums or piano or whatnot. And then just call the perform method. That's, that's, that's how it works. You load all the, all, the, all the classes and then call its perform method. Why am I loading them? Because that way you can change them live and then save. And that's why you know, Ruby reloads them and then the music just changes, right? So, uh, but 
obviously you can't do it like every second, so you sort of need to calculate some sort of poll rate for that to happen. So internally, Banjo calculates the poll rate like this. Um, so if you know a little bit about what uh, tempo is, it's you know just it measures the speed of, of a song, right? So if you had um, a song that's uh, 60 uh, bits per minute, that means there's going to be you know a bit every second, basically, right? So um, in banjo terms, uh, that means that I will have uh, the green ones will happen every second, right? But I need to poll for for the the smaller uh, the smaller periods, and that's going to happen every quarter of a second, right? And uh, you know, a more upbeat song or more regular songs are on 120 in the range between 100 or 140, and you know that means I need to pull uh, and co-perform for those classes every quarter of a quarter of a second, right? And like I said, uh, the the classes themselves are just um, very basic uh, Ruby objects, and the only uh, the, the only thing that you need to do is just um, inherit from this class, which is Banjo Channel, and it will record, you know it will give you all those methods to play and to do you know the, the whole music thing. So on the perform uh, method, you just need to tell basically MIDI how to play some notes, right? So what um, what I use for that, I did a little bit more of research, like how can I use my computer to do MIDI, uh, to send MIDI messages or stuff. So I found this gem, which is called UD MIDI, which is basically that. You just uh, use it to um, use your Ruby code to send MIDI messages and turn off the lights. No, I'm kidding. Um, you use it to send MIDI messages, and then you just set it up uh, on your computer um, MIDI interfaces, and then you just choose one and just send it to software like Logic or GarageBand or whatever your, um, your music software preferences. Um, so I learned a little bit about MIDI, I'm not didn't become a super expert, but I, at least I knew this, is that you have to send a message for when the note is on, like when you press a key on the piano, and then sometime after that, you need to send a message to turn it off, like, like key down, key up, right? And then uh, you need to send the, the, the obviously the key number and the velocity, which is like uh, how much pressure you actually put on a on a key. And that's that's all it does. That's that's all banjo does. It it has something like this. It doesn't have a sleep, but you get you get the feeling like um, I only declare a unimedia output, and then by using puts, I send the message note on. You know, this is the key, and then velocity that can be 100 or can be uh, all the way to 127. And then sleep a little bit and just release the key. So, demo zone again. How do I get out of here? I'm locked. Something happened. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, something happened to my computer. I'm locked on this thing. Um, I need to get out of here, so I'll just help. It's frozen. Thank you, Tim Cook. So I guess I just unplug it and see if that helps. It doesn't. Great. I don't know what's going on here. Just dead. No. Still have. Should I restart it? Will that help? I don't know. Let's do this. Uh -oh. So I'll just turn it on and turn it on real quick. Uh, if I can. Ugh. Computers. <laughs> yeah, it should turn on pretty quick. Um, so it's it's all a matter of doing, you know, mixing a little bit of uh, poll timing and making your computer sort of send MIDI messages to a, an, a, an external software. In my case, I use Logic, 
and 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 so on logic that's where i decide you know this channel is going to be the drums this channel is going to be like the piano and and so on and that's uh, unimedi just helped me through that it it just uh it's it's very raw but still helps you send those those messages this uh, anyway so uh, the purpose of this talk is to invite you to collaborate on Banjo, and, and here's a little to-do list of things that I want to do with it. And one of them is test, does it work on Linux? To be honest, I don't know. But since the Udemy gem claims to do so, then I'm pretty sure that Banjo works on, uh, on, on Linux. So it will be nice if someone could just uh, corroborate that. Um, the other thing, there's a change. I want to change the duration of notes because right now it's in seconds, but you know, sheet music tells you that it should be in sort of uh, fractions um, of the period, so I want to change that. Uh, I want to write a CLI, you know, to just do banjo in it, and then you get like the, the bare bones of a, of a banjo song, and then just create, you know, banjo, channel, piano, and then you get the bare bones of, a, of one of the channels. And just as uh, every junk um, open source project needs, I want to improve the documentation because right now there's not a lot of it in, in, in the repo. So if you wanna help or if you wanna play with it, uh, this is the address, it's on my account under David Banjo. Uh, so just fork it, play around. And if you need help setting up while we're here, just find me and, and, and I can help you. And that's it. So thank you. Thank you, sir.